Hey there, it's Dr. Dave here with another uh, video. This time I'm going to look at using the TI-84 Plus calculator to do regression modelling. So if you look at the data here, I've got an example looking at the concentration of uh, a medication in patient's blood. We've got two variables here. We've got the time versus the concentration. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this into the calculator and then come up with a quadratic model for this data. So the first thing we want to do pressing on stats and we can see the key press history here if you want to follow on at home. Uh, editing that information so in list one we're going to enter the time data so starting off at 0, 0 0.5, 1, 2, and 2.5 and in the second list we're going to use the concentration so starting off at 0 78.1 99.8 and the final one 15.6 and there we've got the, the data entered the next step we're going to draw a scatter plot so to do that, what we need to do is pressing second and then stat plot up here. We're going to turn this one on. Uh, so press enter on there. So turn it on first and selecting the type, which is the first one here, scatter plot. And we're going to use list one for x values, list two for y values. So we don't need to change any of that. So Given that, we can then press on graph, and not much showing up there, so we go into the window, and our range of values for the x min to x max should be between 0 and, we'll make it 3, with an x scale of 0.5. Okay, notice how we've got values every 0.5 here. For the y, we're going to go from 0 up to we'll go 105 and for the Y scale we'll put a tick every 10, 10 values or in this case 10 milligrams per litre. Okay so again graphing that much better we can see the the scatter plot now and we can sort of roughly see that we can have a rough parabolic shape here so it's looking fairly promising at this stage to be able to come up with a quadratic model for that. So to do that, to actually generate the model, we're going to go back into stats, this time calculate, and we want to do a quadratic regression, so we can either move this down, or we can just go straight to click on number 5, to quadratic regression. And again, the X list is going to be list 1, the Y list is list 2. What I'm actually going to do here is store the quadratic regression equ equation, so the function that models that data, in I'm uh, going to use put that in Y1. So we need to go across to Y vars, enter, and enter again for Y1. So we're going to store that information in Y1, which when we press on this button over here, the Y equals should show up, show up there. So go through, calculate that, pressing return, and we get a, a model for that. So A is the coefficient of X squared, B is the coefficient of X, C is the constant. If we now go into the y equals, we'll now see that that function has been modelled. Okay, so no need to, to copy and paste or anything, straight in there. And graphing that, we can see that that will now show up as a curve inside of there as well. So the last thing we can do is look at how good a model we've got. So to do that, we can go into vars. And I'm going to go down to statistics, so this time we'll just press 5. Going across to equality. And I want the R squared value. So this is basically our coefficient of correlation. So pressing on that and enter, we get an R squared value of 0.92. Now, the thing to note here, if we've got an R squared value, the closer we are to 1, the better the correlation. So we're going to get a range of values between uh, minus, minus 1 and 1. 
Okay, so negative correlation up to the best possible positive correlation. So 0.92 is a pretty good correlation there. So we've got a fairly good fit. If, of course, we're getting something more like 0.4 or 0.5, we'd say that we don't have a particularly good fit there. Okay, so just about wrap that up. So again, if you want to go back through that, remember you've got the key history here. You can look at the data, basically follow through the same process yourself. Okay, bye.